Hello students, welcome to Diadme IS. I am Zeba. I am your faculty of labor law at Diadme IS. As you all know from the past discussions that we have been having, that the EF, EPFO and the APFC exam is just uh, around the corner. So, as the notification is there and the expected uh, exam is in July or supposedly August. So, uh, in you have a uh, ample amount of time right now, along with your other exam, competitive exams, to prepare for the same. Because, see, as I always tell this to uh, my students, that the more you start early your preparation, the more uh, you know amount you amount you have to prepare and practice the PYQs, which are very very important for any competitive exam. So, specifically talking about labor law. I'll be teaching labor law to all of you. And in labor law, if you have seen the previous year papers of the two exams, you can clearly see that labor law as a subject is basically confined to the factual questions that are asked. And as uh, the current scenario and the criteria, questions from labor law are expected to be asked. And when I'm talking about the factual questions, you don't have to go into much details. All you ne need to know is that you need to be thorough with all the acts. There are major, major 20 uh, like acts and provisions that you have to do, especially from the labor law point of view. And this particular subject helps you a lot in your interviews as well. As we all know, the other 25% weightage, up, apart from the 75% written exam weightage that you have, 25% is going to be about your interview. So in interview, you can expect such questions because you are going to be working in that entire uh, subject area. So you can uh, expect questions from labor law as well in your interview. Okay, so let's let me just uh, give you a brief of what I'm going to be like teaching you today. The first th topic that I'm going to be starting today from the labor law subject is going to be the Factories Act 1948. It is a very important topic and a very important uh, and a very I would say popular uh, topic for examiners to frame questions because. Uh, there are certain acts like uh, as the classes will be going on we are going to do all the acts uh, separately and in much details so you're going to understand also that this particular factory act in itself has a lot of uh, uh, you know that that I would say buffer of a lot of questions to be framed from the same so let me just start with this quickly let me just give you an introduction of the content that are there in the factories act So these are the basic uh, contents that are there in the Factories Act, which you are supposed to be thorough about. So first is basically the historical fact of uh, factory legislation. We are going to do all the um, contents of Factory Acts one by one. Then you are going to understand what is the, you need to ha know what is the object of the act, why this act was formed and what is the main crux of it being formed. Then you, are, you ne also need to know the scope and the applicability of the act. These are the three main uh, like the scope the applicability and the object you need to be very clear with this thing about the factory act then there are certain specific definitions that are asked from the exam uh, and the definitions are basically in alignment to the specific sections also so you need to know those definitions we are going to do all the definitions and I'm also going to teach you quick ways to learn and because definitely for you, you can understand also there are a lot of facts to be mugged up so instead of all that mugging thing going on and that confusion i'm going to give you a quick like a uh, way so that you can always remember it and try to you know regather it during your exam so while you're actually attempting it so that is also i'm going to be teaching you then the approval licensing and the uh, registration that is required for setting up of factories what are the rules and regulation and guidelines and everything then we are going to do the inspecting staff there is a supposed commissioner that is assigned by the state and the central government we are going to learn about that also then we are going to do the certifying surgeons a factory as a manufacturing industry needs a health inspector and a lot of uh, I would say staff in accordance to the inspection and everything 
so that is um, on on medical lines right so we need to understand this also then specific health uh, you are going to be studying in health also there are certain uh, i would say points that you need to keep in your mind then safety what is safety and how it is in accordance to the different sections of the factory act we are going to know that provisions relating to the hazardous processes that is there uh, in the factory or the industry what is then you have to we can cannot uh, miss the human aspect of the people working it because they are the main resources who are and may the main source of i would say empowerment for any uh, business module also so the welfare of fact workers is very very important and similarly on those lines we need to know the working hours of adult workers employment of young persons annual leave with wages and other features so these are all the topics that i'm going to be teaching you in this particular factory act of 1948 right for today's session specifically i have chosen few uh, topics so that you get a well versed idea that how the teaching and how the understanding of this topic is basically um, to be received right so let me just start with the session now for the session today that i'm going to be teaching you i'm going to be specifically be focusing upon the historical facts of the factory legislation which is very important we are going to go to the history of understanding that why this factory act 1948 was in the first place established then we are going to understand that we are going to actually define the act clearly so that you know very well that what this act is all about then the scope and applicability of the act right then the specific the def definitions this is very important please make sure that you are well versed and you have learned all the definitions that are there in the factory act and similarly for other acts also definition in, in itself is a, since your exam is basically an mcq based exam so such prompt questions can be very like frequently be asked so you need to be well versed with this definitions then the health about the health in itself is a topic in the factories act safety welfare of workers working of top work hours of adult workers and employment of young persons so all this basically we have discussed in the previous slides i am just going to give you a, giving you a gist about that what for today's particular session i am going to be teaching you okay so uh, at diadmi is we have also started the classes for the non general subjects so you can join for epfo and the um uh, apfc exam and you can even join our telegram channel for other details you can visit our website thank you okay let me just before moving on to uh, what this act is all about and everything that is within see factories act is itself a act which you have to understand from the perspective of you being a future officer so in factories act 1948 basically you need to know the main five key points you need to be thorough with these five key points and why five because the entire factories act 1948 revolves around these five key points if you are well versed with these five key points you have very clearly mastered over the factories act 1948 right so for some student it becomes like ma'am is it, it it is so much of facts to be learned to be mugged up will it become boring see it is not about the boring facts you can make these boring facts also interesting by the way or the kind of method you are using to learn these facts right it can be uh, sometimes monotonous also but of course the right approach that you are using that would definitely keep that uh, good aspect of you actually remembering in while writing the exam so it is not that boring definitely i am going to be providing you slides and here also you are going to get notes and everything so the questions are basically 5 to 7 and uh, in the exam so you can even expect this to be a full fledged six scoring subject right so make sure that you don't miss out on the, uh, the easy 5 7 mark questions that you are already mastering over for scoring so let's just understand it from this subject in particular from this perspective okay okay so coming back to the factories act 1948 students you need to know the objective scope and coverage of that there is a clear clear definition if somebody ask you also what is factory act what is the objective of it why it was established you need to be very clear and thorough with that 
then you need to make sure that you need to know the provisions regarding health safety and welfare the government of india had also started several uh, you know there have been several case studies also we will be doing those case studies also for today's session so you are going to understand that these provisions have been keep, always been on the go they have always been re revised and re revised depending upon the kind of case uh, that appears so with time of course a lot of parameters changes but it has always been about escalating to a better level of uh, including factories act in the entire uh, functioning okay so then the provisions that are also relating to working hours holidays and leave you need to know that this give basically is regarding these two are basically regarding the human angle that is associated with the factories act so you need to be very well clear with this then also you need to know the provisions related to the women and young persons again these three are well aligned to with each other because the provisions related to all these three topics you need to be aware of then you need to know the administrative and the enforcement machinery on the management level also how factories act 1948 is included you need to know that also so these are the main five key points which you need to keep in mind and you need to make sure that you are well versed with right so let's start with the first thing let me take you back to the fact that why this factory act in first of 1948 was in the first place included means what was the prime reason of it being included and now it being a part of uh, our constitution of india right so it dates back to the pre independence era we all know that during the british era india was not at all uh, completely on the lines of industry on developed in in context of industry so there were just two mills mills of cotton and jute that were also established in the year 1851 so that time that there were the two industries that were set up and definitely there were no other uh, i would say chemical or any uh, other type of manufacturing industry that was there there were just the two uh, major mills that were set up they used to called it gradually in 1851 first the cotton mill was established and post that in 1855 then the jute industry or the jute mill came uh, into india so these were the first two basic uh, product industry that was uh, that was actually started we started with so this journey then moved on to 1881 when we were still in the under the british rule and in 1881 the indian factories act was passed by the britishers and according to that they wanted to provide protection to employees especially children because at that point in time everybody was whoever wanted to work was a part of the factory culture so britishers for the because they were understanding also that politically the environment of the country is is uh, you know becoming quite dynamic in nature so they wanted to uh, make sure that they uh, they all they are uh, a part or they develop certain kind of although it was not on the sympathy lines but they just wanted to make sure that they are considering india a very important place for them or for the development in 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 general right so the commish factory commission was first is, is appointed in the year 1819 that was the first time the factory commission was established then from 1881 it was after 10 years in 1891 the first time the term factory was defined right the definition of the factory was amended to include now the including the premises in which the 50 persons or more were employed so here you can clearly see in the year 1891 was the very first time that they included the real definition of what a factory would be right then from 1891 then it moved on to the 1934 when we were almost uh, coming close to our country's independence this act was again re revised and redrafted and uh, it was basically redrafted recommendations were made by the royal commission on the labor which was later appointed in the year 1929 and then subsequently in 189 sorry in 1934 the factory act 1934 was passed and post independence we as indians owned and like took it as a part of our own constitution of india and tried to uh, reiterate it in, in our own indian culture context and made it indian factories act 1948 so it dates back to that time 
and now also from in 1948 we are still using the factories act 1948 but there have been n number of re revisions that have been made there have been several drafts that have been uh, you know there in the right now and depending upon like, like i just said the changes are always being the alteration is always there so so you, i hope this particular slide has made you understand that how this factories act 1948 in the first place came into picture okay just know the dates you need to be very well versed with the dates that's why i have drawn this in such a form so that you can remember this diagram and you can you know related to the particular uh, history event of the factories act 1948 okay right so let's move on now let me just define it simply what a factory act 1948 is it says the object of this act is to protect the human beings from being subjected to the unduly long hours of body stra bodily strain or manual labor in british era major major point was that they did not consider uh, the indians as a uh, respectable employees for them we were just subject of profit making business right so post that also indians when they when we at you know adapted the uh, indian factories act 1948 the first thing that came to the minds of the leaders at that point was that we need to make sure that the humans who are working are treated well and they are not made to be subjected to any kind of unruly or a kind of any uh, i would say un uh, comfortable environment so, right so it also seeks to provide that employees should work in a healthy and a sanitary condition definitely they are they are human beings so they need to also have a good environment where they are working and they are, they maintain their health also even if they are working for n number of hours or the number of hours that are clearly defined in the factory act 1948 so main thing was the then the safety for the prevention of accidents post uh, you know in 19 there was an extra chapter it it is basically i i hope you guys know about the bhopal gas tragedy so post bhopal gas tragedy also there was a new chapter that was added to the factories act of, of 1948 and it was added in the year 1987 so now this new chapter was added because india faced a very um, horrifying situation with the bhopal gas tragedy many people died unfortunately so then india indian government decided that okay this is something that there are the cert, there are certain criteria which we have to there have to be amendments made so we added a, there was a specific new chapter that was added so like i just told you factories act is very very primarily focused on the health of the workers on the safety environment on the entire um, you know human grounds also even while the production of any product or service is happening so make sure that you know this very clearly they have clearly defined what kind of uh, work is going to be uh, under the umbrella of the term manufacturing we are going to do that also in the other classes right i hope now you have understood the definition of the factory act and what is the objective of this particular act now if you come to the scope and applicability of the law that ma'am where what is the scope of this law where is it actually applied so basically the act extends to the entire india right all the state governments and the central governments make sure that the factory act is very well uh, practiced like exercised in the all the factories that are established under their uh, administration so it applies to all the factory factory belonging to the central and the state government so it is basically there uh, also they monitor and they make sure that all the rules and regulations are also followed and if not then strict uh, you know actions are taken against the defaulters the benefits of this act is that are they are available to persons who are employed in the factory and be converted within the meaning of the term worker is well defined so or uh, there have been uh, a lot of confusion regarding the fact of the term workers so we have actually uh, you know we have raised from the slave uh, dynasty we have we have had uh, uh, many rulers who have treated indians as slave unfortunately 
so now as per the development of the country we have been working towards the term different different terms have been clearly cl defined in this factories act of 1948 the especially the term worker right then it also besides that the term factories definition is also very well discussed and several definitions are also but worker and factory are the main two definitions which are clearly clearly mainly focused in the factories act of 1948 since the term factory refers to the manufacturing process right it would be helpful to know the meaning of the term manufacturing process as defined by the act so see from worker factory manufacturing process just to avoid any kind of ambiguity for further reference all these three terms are clearly clearly defined so tomorrow nobody can come and you know clearly say that okay this is the person and this person is doing this and uh, he or she is not the worker of our uh, factory so he or she is supposed to be uh, you know uh, removed or whatever as per the factory act this is has this has to be referred to this and in accordance to then to to this only the person will be you know prosecuted or will be exempted from any kind of punishment even for the owners also the occupier of the factory or the the person who is uh, the manager or running the industry also they are also their terms are also who they are what this their responsibilities and roles are and everything everything is in clearly details defined here but three terms like i just told you factory workers and manufacturing process you need to know and they are also here okay so when i'm talking about the definitions there is a particular chart that i have included to make it easy for you to learn about this very very uh, important definitions that might come in your mcqs at the end of today's class we are going to do pyqs also okay please make sure that you are studying with me very carefully so that the at the end when we are going to be doing the pyqs you are participating and you are also uh, you know understanding right so the first term here that is adult so who is an adult the definition in the un, under the factories act so all these definitions are under the factories act mentioned so adult means a person who has been come has completed his 18 years of age and it comes under the section 2a if you can clearly see here i have what i have done in alphabetical order i have moved on from one term to another so that you remember this chart and when you are uh, actually uh, giving your exams or practicing your mock tests you can recall all these things then adolescent is basically a person who is has completed 15 years of age but is not has not reached the 18 years of age so it is basically between 15 to 18 years of age and this particular definition is comes under the section 2b right then the what is the definition of a child a child is a person who has not definitely attained the age of 15 years see for some it would for somebody who has not studied labor law they would be wondering ma'am why this very simple definitions are uh, like defined here in the factory act this is basically like i just told you these are all very important terms when it comes to any kind of uh, incident or accident so these definitions are clearly clearly defined to avoid any further kind of confusion or ambiguity now child as a definition itself is a part of section 2c you need to remember the sections also competent person who is a competent person a person is basically said to be a competent when this person is recognized by an institution or or by such by the chief of inspector for the purpose of carrying out the test examination and inspections required to be done in the factory so he is the person who is basically well versed and experienced and knowledgeable on those lines and where it is defined it is defined under the section 2ca please make sure that you note that 2ca right i hope you can now recall these four definitions let's move on to some more definitions then we have calendar year and what calendar year clearly defines is basically it means the period of 12 months beginning with the first day of the january in any year it is different from the financial year which starts from 1st of march sorry 1st of april so basically it comes under the section of section 2 double b or bb then the definition of day right from c we have now come to d so from d we have it means a period of definitely 12 hours 
and it is defined in the section 2e all right then we come to the w which is basically a definition of v and it is a period of 7 days and it starts at the midnight of saturday night right then it is clearly defined in the section 2c okay so 2a 2b 2c then we did to uh, in the previous year, uh, previous slide we did 2 ca then we did with 2 bb so you can just make sure that you can match the sections with the particular definition then the transmission machinery is basically that sh any shaft or wheel or drum or a pulley which is running a system of pulley pulley coupling clutch driving belt and all those machinery parts which are in process of running or functioning right they come under the section 2i okay okay so let's start with the clear definition of the term worker that we just were about to continue with so worker worker itself has a lot of uh, like details related to it in factories act what it says is a worker means a person employed directly or through an agency he or she might be direct uh, hired directly by the manufacturing company or the fact factory or but through any um, you know middleman or any contractor for that matter right it might be with or without the knowledge of the company owner owner or the person who is actually has, has is the main person who owns the factory he or she might even not know about that person is hired so whether for remuneration he or she is hired or not in the manufacturing process or in cleaning any part of the machinery or premises or the uh, you know for a manufacturing pr uh, process so anything related to the manufacturing thing that is happening uh, um, you know along those lines he or she will be termed as the worker so if if the person is working any in, in any context related to the manufacturing thing process so he or she will be termed as worker please remember that and it is basically saying that it does not include the members of the armed force of the union the people from the military or army or um, air force they are not 
basically termed as workers because definitely they are doing a very um, uh, dignified and respectable job in context. So I, there is no basically a differentiation between the two, but they don't come under the term workers, right? And this term worker comes under the section of 2i. Okay, please remember that. I hope now you're very clear with the fact that what is the clear, clear definition of worker, right? There is no confusion in context to this. Then we have the definition of shift and relay. Whether work of the same kind is carried out by two or more, more sets of workers during the different periods of time. When the same kind of work is being done by two people in uh, different timelines, you know, that is called basically a, the kind of this such set of work is called relay and each such time period is called a shift, right? The time period that is associated is called a shift and the kind of such set of work is called relays, right? So this comes under the section 2R, okay? I hope now you know the definition of relay as well as shift very clearly. This is a basically, and uh, I would say a very in-depth question. If, if you have just not studied it in detail, you cannot answer a question if it comes like, what is a shift or what is a relay, okay? So make sure that you know this, right? Then we have a manufacturing process. So manufacturing process is itself clearly defined under the section of 2K. What manufacturing process is, let's see that. Manufacturing process means any process of, so a lot of things are there here. You just need to know the gist of the points. What it, what it is, it is about making, altering or changing, repairing, ornamenting, Finish, finishing, packaging, oiling, washing, and so forth, right? Pumping of oil, water, sewage, substances, this is also part of manufacturing. Generating, transforming, or transmitting power, that also come under the manufacturing process, okay? Composing types of printing, printing by letterpress, litho lithography, photograph, or similar process of book binding. This is also part of manufacturing. Constructing, reconstructing, repairing, refitting, finishing or breaking of ships or vessels, inserting by the Factories Amendment Act 1976. This also comes under the term manufacturing process. Preserving or storing any article in cold storage also comes under the manufacturing process. So tomorrow if there is any kind of a case that is filed in let's say High Court or Supreme Court or any district court of India and people try to create a confusion that this is a manufacturing process or this is a manufacturing process. So to avoid all that kind of hustle for the later part, all the listed activities that are there in this are a part of the manufacturing process. I'll be showing you case studies also where all these terms have been questioned and there have been um, a lot of, uh, um, I would say, judgments passed by the Supreme Court of India and so forth who have clearly said that and redefined and reiterated the definitions to avoid again, like I said, to any, avoid any kind of confusion. Now, what is the case? Uh, the very interesting cases have been here regarding the manufacturing process. So let's take and understand few cases so that you get a good, uh, so case studies might be asked, but, uh, but I sometimes, it, like it depends upon the level of difficulty of the exam. So you can expect a question. All you need to know is the, these are since popular cases with this particular term, associated with this particular term. So you need to be well versed with them. So good knowledge for this, for sure. So basically the first case was uh, against the, like uh, held by from the state, state of Bombay versus Ali Saheb Kashmim Tamboli. It was in 1958. And here, after the verdict, th th it was mentioned, there was a confusion and, you know, all that um, um, fight happening between the two parties that what, what is a biddy. Uh, so basically, they said that b at the end, the judgment was part, passed that uh, BD is uh, making is basically a manufacturing process. It was not earlier a part of the constitution of, uh, the, sorry, the Factory Act 1948. G gradually later in 1950, uh, 1995, it came and it became a part of the uh, manufacturing process. Then in, uh, in Ardeshir versus Bombay state, and it was in the year uh, 1962, it said that the conversion of any kind of a raw film or product into finished product will be termed as a manufacturing process, right? 
so this was again the part of it then there was a third case where it was new taj mahal cafe case of Ma mangalore versus the ins uh, inspector of factories at mangalore so they went for some inspection and there was certain uh, um, case filed so they said the preparation of food stuff and other eatable items in the kitchen of a restaurant and use of a refrigerator treating or adapting any article with a view to its sale will be termed as manufacturing right so this is these are the few um, popular three cases that are there in the uh, they, that have been there in the under the manufacturing process term and they have uh, because of these cases these terms have been added to the factories act of 1935 under the umbrella of manufacturing process okay so now another very important uh, definition like i told you is of worker worker it is in itself is broadly as it is written also here it is a person who is employed who is employed directly or through any agencies we have discussed these two points who is employed in any manufacturing process cleaning or and machinery premises all these definitions we have clearly done so now you i hope you are well versed with the term worker i am not re repeating it but now i think this term worker itself is very clear in your mind okay let's go ahead and see few ca interesting cases that have been there associated with the term worker under the factories act of 1948 so three major cases have been there the first one has been in chintaman rao versus state of mp of madhya pradesh and it was from it was it dates back to 1958 and here it say it was a here it gave the restricted meaning to the word directly or through any agency so again there was a certain confusion or a certain uh, um, question regarding the fact that who is uh, like in terms of somebody being recruited or hired so again supreme court of india clearly sa said that they clearly defined and re uh, like figured the term and said the that what it is going to be then in dharangan uh, <coughs> Dharangadra Chemical Works versus State of Saurashtra in the year 1957. Again, the master's right of superintendent and control of the method of doing the work was defined. So again, there was like what kind of the role of a superintendent is and what is the role and responsibility going to be clearly about of the superintendent and the way he they want the work to go ahead with. So that was again defined here in this case. in the state of kerala versus v m patel in the year 1961 the work of garbling paper by winnowing cleaning washing drying and you know in lime and laid out to dry in the warehouse are again termed under the manufacturing process and the person employed in these process were workers people who are going to be working here they are again going to be termed as workers so you cannot say that later on anybody comes up and say okay this person is doing this job and he or she is not a part of the factory or the company no he or she will be uh, considered the worker of that particular organization who is doing the garbling of paper also okay these are few very interesting uh, cases that i always include because then these terms become more relevant for you to understand right so even if somebody asks you later on also so you can refer to these cases and try to answer any kind of a question that is projected to you again uh, two cases here uh, it was basically shankar balaji vajje versus state of maharashtra and it says in the year 1957 it says that the supreme court said that the such person were not workers because there was no control and supervision over panduram so basically there was some bd this case was associated with some bd making making manufacturing so they were um, you know working from some other place and but still they were making uh, and you know delivering uh, bds to the factory so that this was something that was there so supreme court of india said term to avoid any confusion there was a case filed and all those things happened so they said that these people were not workers and there was no control because there was no supervision over the pandura theek hai let's now come to the in birth chand sharma versus first child judge of nagpur so it was in air 1961 
and here uh, the respondents prepared BDs again at the uh, factory and they were not at the liberty to work to th at their home. So they were not given that liberty. On these facts, the Supreme Court of India held the respondents were workers, although they are doing it from their home, right? Sorry, they are doing it at the factory and not they are not doing at it at their you know that was basically rolling of the BDs that was happening. So they, again, this act was there and this was clearly defined by the Supreme Court of India in the Bid Charan Sharma versus First Civil Judge Nagpur case. Uh, section that I'm going to be talking about. So when I talk about the occupied term in itself, as you can see also here, occupier is a person who is basically the has the ultimate control over the affairs of the factory. He is the person who has started the uh, you know the industry or the factory or the business organization, and he is the person who is the main person who established the uh, premises and everything. So, in accordance to that, in the case of a company. The director shall be termed as the occupier, or in the case if the factory is owned by the central government, state government, right? So in that case, the person appointed for the affairs of the factory, that person will be who, uh, who or who he or she will be, he or she will be termed as an occupier. Then the central government, state government, or the local authority, as the case may be, shall be deemed to the occupier. So they are basically in. Uh, context of being respondent to the uh, specific three governments and any kind of so basically the this person is the first person who is responsible for the same The specific duties of the occupier are, they are mentioned in the section 7a and they say plant maintenance that is safe and without risk of health of workers, that again is the duty to be maintained by the uh, occupier, to safeguard the health and the safety of the use of handling, storage and transportation of goods. Definitely it, the, the safety is the main uh, context, even the profit making part of products that are and services that are being provided by the factory is always in accordance to the safety environment that is there. Providing information, instruction, training, supervision to ensure health safety of all the workers. Monitoring of the work environment and also it lay, lays down all the rules that is prepared with the nine written statements of the policy with respect to the health and safety. <clears throat> A prior documentation is signed with between the two parties that the where the worker is clearly defined all the kind of uh, further consequences related to health and safety that might come up in the later stage with the kind of worker he or she is doing. So this is clearly uh, so that later on nobody comes and try to question the occupier or the factory owner regarding the fact that they were unaware of the same, right? So all these things are clearly defined. So the occupier has to do all the five roles as mentioned here. Then you, we come to the term health. For health specifically, I have included a very uh, clear table form where of key points where section 11 to 18 are defined. And for every section, there is an associated uh, definition for the same. For under health of the uh, term of the Factories Act 1948, we have major seven term sections that are there. 
and the terms related to them are section 11 is for cleanliness in every factory 12 talks about the disposal of waste garbages and effluents 13 talk about ventilation and temperature setting 14th talks about dust and fumes 15 talk about artificial humidification in some factories artificial humidification is very much required so they artificially generate the humidity but the level of the percentage of setting of humidity is very much clearly defined here then in 16 the term of overcrowding is explained lighting is explained they have to be in educate lightning daylight or any kind of natural artificial light and then for 18 we have a drinking water right So now let's understand each definition within this health term that is broadly classified. So cleanliness student comes under the section 11 of like we have just seen previously. You need to remember that L section 11 is for cleanliness under health definition and it talks about the general health cleanliness to be maintained in the factory. Regular cleaning and you know whitewashing and everything within 14 months of gap and everything is clearly defined here. Then the disposable of waste or the effluence it is defined in section 12 and it makes obligatory for the owner of the every factory to make sure that there are arrangements for the treatment of waste and effluence make all the garbage solid in a solid in terms of solid liquid or gas has to be clearly disposed they need to be and this comes as a responsibility of the uh, I would say the owner of the company right then ventilation and temperature again it comes under the section 13 and it talks about to make effective and suitable provisions for securing and maintaining in every workroom adequate ventilation and circulation of fresh air right then dust and fumes is defined in section 14 1 and it deals with the measures adopted to keep the workroom free from dust and any kind of fume and this basically comes under the responsibility of the occupier then for artificial humidification we have section 15 1 and it says it lays down that the, the humidity of the air is artificially increased it has to be a certain level that is to be maintained it cannot be arbitrary right then the factory uh, th this basically has uh, further 10 sub points that are defined of describing the prescriptive standard humidification regulating the methods used for increasing the humidification because otherwise it would become a very like a health hazard so this has to be under the very clear instructions only directing prescribed tests for determining the humidity of air to be in out and recorded prescribing the methods to be adopted for securing adequate ventilation and cooling of air in the room right overcrowding also there should not be too many workers working in the same room so this is clearly defined in the factories act 1948 and it describes that no room for any factory shall be overcrowded to the extent that it becomes injurious to the health of the workers right now along with that the lighting term is also defined under the section 17 1 and it says that every room should have natural artificial or both lightning proper right drinking water also has to be a facility provided it comes under section 18 and the arrangements of drinking water clean water in the factory should be made available then the conservancy arrangements you know should be provided for male and female workers separately at convenient places spittoons are also to be provided again comes under the section 21 of this uh, health definition in the factory act 1948 and it says that sufficient number of spittoons are to be provided at convenient place for the health and hygienic condition right so as you can see here also under the term of health health as an umbrella term several sub division, division uh, sorry definitions are there and all those definitions are associated with the particular section some important sections i have included in the beginning of the uh, this particular topic you can read there and understand it otherwise also when we are reading these uh, you know when you are going to reread and do the re-revision also these terms or the sections are going to be very uh, easily be remembered by you now let's come to the term safety
So safety in itself is a very important term under the Factories Act of 1958. Health was also important. Uh, we have done the, we have actually been doing today the major definitions that are there in this Factories Act of 1948. And on those lines only, safety in itself has several very important sections and clear defi definition of all the terms or all the situation that might come and how they have to be dealt with in a factory or in an industry, right? Section 21 talks about the fencing of the machinery. There has to be specific uh, protection made or any, any kind of uh, by walls or any uh, like a bar, uh, you know, fencing kind of a situation where the entire premises of the factory or machine or the entire machinery is protected, right? This section states that the factory should fence the following machinery, substantial constructions and maintaining them in the right position. They need to be well aligned and well kept also. Section 22 talks about the work on or near the machinery in motion. They, what is the basically under section 22 of the safety definition, the work on or the person who is working near the machine in motion, they, these what are how they have to be, how close, how close the distance has to be maintained, everything is defined in the section 22 of this. Section 23 talks about employment on dangerous machine. The If any worker is working on any dangerous machine which might be like related to any kind of uh, uh, you know danger also like uh, there are nuclear chemicals or something like that or any kind of uh, harmful or very uh, highly concentrated acid. So in that section the factory owners or man managers cannot allow any worker to work any machine without instructing him or her about the dangers of the outcome on the relevant precautions, right? So this is basically very much to be remembered. Section 24 talks about the devices for cutting of power. Basically it says that there should be one particular, uh, I would say switch, which can be easily turned off when there is any kind of a health or any kind of an emergency situation appears, right? So section 24 talks, 24 talks about it. Then we have section 25, which talks about the self-acting machinery. There are certain machineries so which uh, are self-acting. So it states that no factory should allow any traversing part of self-acting machinery in any factory to run within a distance of 45 centimeters from a fixed structure and which is not a part of the machine. So the distance that is to be maintained from the self-functioning uh, machinery is also clearly defined under the section 25. Section 26 talks about the casing of a new machinery, right? I have included a fun fact here also. The state government may make rules specifying further safeguards to be provided with respect to any dangerous part of any particular machine or class of description of the machine. So state government can do that. That's the responsibility they can perform. Then section 27 talks about prohibition of any employment of workers of sorry women or children near the cotton openers. So when cotton openers have certain kind of fumes or certain kind of particles that come out which might uh, create problem in the respiratory uh, you know functioning. So definitely for such uh, machines where there is a cotton opener women and uh, children will not be employed in that location right. So it talks about that. So now I hope you can see from section 21 to, to section number 27, we have talked about the uh, safety, uh, you know, all the particular um, provisions related to the safety guidelines. Now I come to another very important topic which talks about the welfare of workers. Like I just told you in the beginning also and we have been discussing it in today's session very well also that the welfare of the workers is very, very important. Uh, this chart might not be that clear to you, but don't worry, I'll just uh, like say it loudly so that you don't have any uh, confusion regarding that. So basically the provisions regarding this welfare of the workers comes under the washing facility of section 42. Right, let me just write it down here. Washing, I hope you all can see the board and what I'm writing here. Washing facility or let me just take another white pen so that it becomes more easy for you to read. Right. So it talks about the washing facility. 
which comes under the section 42 then you have facilities for storing and drying they come under clothing basically clothing this comes under section 43 then you have facilities for sitting so these are all a part of the welfare for uh, in uh, you know regard to the welfare of the workers section 44 then you have first aid facility this is very important in any uh, industries which is dealing with any kind of hazardous chemicals or stuff like that this comes under section 45 then you have canteens the refreshment part it comes under section 46 then you have shelters restrooms lunch rooms they come under section 47 then you have crutches for women who have children under the age of six years they are also clearly defined under the welfare of workers provision then you have welfare officers who are there designed sorry designated for ensuring that there is smooth uh, welfare methodology being maintained so this is basically that comes under the provisions regarding the welfare of the workers So now let's let me just take these entire terms related to the sections and the definitions one by one. The first definition talks about the washing and sitting facilities, right? Washing and sit sitting facilities here in every um, like factory, it is clearly defined that adequate and separate separate suitable separate facilities for washing and cleaning should be provided for both male and female workers. Then the facilities of first aid or an, and the ambulance room says important uh, from the perspective of so these are very important in terms of the question framing also right so the what is the facility of first aid and how, how it is going to be it says the first aid boxes or cupboards should readily be accessible or equipped with the contents the number of boxes and cupboards should not be less than one for every 150 workers employed at any factory so if there are 150 workers and or more then you have to make sure that there is say there is a good amount of first aid boxes available for each one of them right and in every factories for more than 500 workers employed there has to be a maintenance of an ambulance room with all the facilities and it should be of prescribed size containing equipments qualified medical nursing staff and so forth canteen and rest rooms is basically where there are 250 workers or more there has to be a definitely facility provided by the occupier also in every factory where there are 150 or more workers employed suitable shifters or the restrooms or lunch rooms with the provision for drinking water where workers can eat meals sorry workers it is not workers it is workers workers can eat meal and pro maintain for the use of their uh, resting also right so this particular like welfare of workers is very important because this helps to create a very healthy environment in context of mental health right so anybody who's happily uh, you know perceived to be a part of the business organization he or she will be more like open to provide their own um, out uh, you know output so definitely this has to be considered then there are this uh, they talks about the crutches facility in every factory where there are more than 30 women please remember if there are more than 30 women and they have children below the years of six years so they are going to be a part of they uh, this is the duty of the occupier to have a facility of a crutch available in the factory so that the mother and the child can be uh, closely uh, you know there with each other the appointment of 
welfare officers like i just told you it ag again comes under the uh, definition of welfare of workers only it is basically the main duty of the welfare worker is to basically make sure that in every factories where there are more than 150 workers are ordinarily employed the occupier of a factory is required to appoint a such number of workers of welfare officers that are described as in accordance with the state government this person ap appointed should be fully qualified and should know all the duties imposed on him or her regarding the under the rules that are going to be followed in the factory or the business organization right So section 51 talks about the weekly hours and weekly hours basically is 48 hours a week as you can all see it here. Right? And then subsequently for section 52 we have the weekly holidays. The weekly holidays are clearly mentioned in the section 52. 
Section 53 defines the compensatory holidays. It says that if a person is working on the holiday, then he or she as a worker will be given uh, holidays in future and it is according to the timeline of next two months, right? So that the holiday on which he was or she was working, that is compensated. Then section 54 talks about the daily hours. So basically a worker is asked to work for nine hours maximum, right? Nine hours per day and anything beyond nine hours is considered as overtime or overwork, right? Section 54.5 talks about rest intervals after every five to six hours, the worker has to be given a 30 minute on half an hour break and this is mandatory. It depends upon the state governments also with where their factory has been uh, running. Then section 56 talks about the spread over. Looking at the human limitation in working, this section states that the periods of work of adult worker in factory including the intervals for the rest should not spread for more than 10.5 hours in a day. So a worker is supposed to be just there working in the factory for not more than 10.5 hours, right? Then it talk section 57 for the working conditions in for adult workers talks about night shifts. Basically, for the holiday, like you can see he here also, it provides class like clear clarification of the question related to night shifts. It states that if a worker works post midnight, then the provision of holidays under section 52 and 53 will be apply will be applicable for the next 24 hours after his shift ends. So you will not be like even if the worker has done a night shift night shift also you are not going to call him the next day immediately at the same reporting time you have to give him a 24 hour break and then you can continue and you can you know you can start on with the same working hours section 59 talks about the overtime and the extra wages rewarding these workers who are trying to work for more than for the maximum time right you need to reward them they need to have certain uh, you know goal of motivation that they receive from you a uh, means from the business or owners or from the occupiers that they are providing more input so they need to get that more extra wages section 60 talk about the double employment no worker is allowed or required to work for more than one factory in a day you are just supposed to work in one factory in a single day and this comes under section 60 of the working hours of adult welfare provision now 61 talks about notice of periods of workers for adult this section states that the factory manager should paste a notice on the wall about the time period of the work and for the workers this has to be clearly defined so that there is no ambiguity or confusion the manager has to comply with the time limiting sections like section 52 in the case the worker does not have to work at the same time then the manager should specify the time or the uh, particular time of the day where he or she can come and work. That flexibility or that understanding is between the worker and the manager basically. Section 62 is basically about the register of workers. This section states that the manager of the factory has to maintain a list regarding all the workers working in the industry or the factory. Right? Let's move on to the last topic of today's discussion. After this we are going to do PYQs. And this particular topic is about the work employment of the young persons. Okay, let's do the last topic for today's discussion. After that, we are going to do the PYQs, very interesting PYQs and everything is, uh, all the PYQs that we are going to discuss today are in accordance to the discussion that we have had today. The first, employment of young children or adolescents. Firstly, the term of adolescents is, is very clearly defined under this act. It and also to avoid any kind of a situation of child labor also, this Factories Act is very strict in context of the rules and regulations and no factory owner or the occupier can surpass that definition and try to uh, violate it, right? So no factory can employ any person unless he or she has completed 14 years of age. This comes under section 67, okay? Thus, there is a total prohibition in employing children below 
fifty pro, sorry there is a particular prohibition of employing any person below fourteen years of age. You cannot employ any children who is under the age of fourteen years. It will be equivalent to the child labor um, defamation act that is going to be case that is going to be then filed against the occupier. Regarding adolescent above the age of fifteen years and below the age of eighteen years, that person is considered as an adolescent. He too can only be employed in a factory unless first condition he is as the as the manager of the factory are in possession of a certificate. They need to have a clear certificate of their certified from a surgeon that he or she is well uh, healthy. I would say in in work in a fact to work in a factory. Right. Sometimes there are situations where children um, because of certain. Um, unavoidable circumstances they have to work so that child also if he is from 15 to 18 years of age he or she can work but definitely it is very much after the certification that is provided and the child has to carry that certificate with him or her during the working hours that he or she is working there okay then there is an effect of certificate of fitness granted to adolescents it is basically an adolescent who has not attained the age of 17 years but has obtained a certificate of fitness to work in a factory as an adult shall be required or allowed to work between just 6 to 7 pm the timeline here is clearly defined if that he or she is basically having the certificate but has not attained the age of 17 years or so so then also that person need to just work on in these particular number of hours and then it says vary the limit down in this subsection so however no subsection authorize employment of any female adolescents between 10 and 5 pm this is basically an employment for any female uh, adolescent who is working so this is bas this basically how it is going to be for a female employee grant exemption from the provision of this subsection in the case of serious emergencies where national interest involved if there is a national interest involved then clearly there will be no um, allowing of the adolescent workers right i hope now you have understood the how if, if even if there is an adolescent worker working in a uh, factory or an industry there are certain rules or the regulations the occupier has to abide by right so of course they are treated as a worker only but they are treated with utmost care because we cannot deny the fact that at the end of the day they are children only so they cannot be just uh, treated in the similar way that a worker is there has to be like a little neutral uh, way of approaching with them or dealing with them right working hours for children basically since they are from 14 to 18 years of age the maximum of work lasting four and a half hours in a day for adult it used to be eight to nine hours right but for children it is specifically maximum hours is four four and a half hours right the number of work is to be limited to shifts only definitely we know that the shifts are not to be overlapped there cannot be extra or overwork uh, given to the children the spread over is if there is overtime also not more than five hours this is strictly mentioned there the child is to be employed only in one relay the child is going to do only one kind of a work at the one machinery he or she not, will not be doing you know n number of work at in the factory at the same time the spread over is not change not to change except in 30 days you know you if even if there is a spread over also for ex exceeding for five hours but then you have to wait for third one month and then next month you give that uh, ask that child to do a uh, I would say overwork right so that is how it is for them no exemption for the provision of section 52 dealing with weekly holidays is there but when there is a holiday for uh, adult workers there was still uh, you know some some exemptions but for child worker there is absolutely no exemption if it is a holiday the child worker or the adolescent worker is supposed to be having a holiday employment during night is definitely not prohibited is completely prohibited for the adolescent worker right so these are the main key points that come under the employment of a working child right of a young person i would still call, call him or her a child because somebody definitely who has not atti attained 18 years of age according to me is 
still a child only, right? But that is just a personal uh, perspective for me. Now let's do the PYQs quickly. The first PYQ, as you can see here, it says which following industries was first is established during the British rule of India. If you go with the first slide that we did today, where we began our session uh, today with the discussion of the history here, right? So the, if you, clearly it is mentioned the jute and the mill uh, cotton industry, right? So coming back, you can easily answer this. cotton and jute industry. Then which one of the following is not a welfare provision for under the Factories Act of 1948? For the welfare, canteen can be a part of welfare, crutches, first aid, but drinking water is not a part of the welfare. It is basically a basic necessity or facility, sorry, to that is to be provided. It does not come under the welfare provision like canteen, crutches and the first aid. Ambulance room is provided in the case of basically, if you remember when we did the, uh, um, you know, the health uh, definition, the ambulance room was basically for, uh, a first aid box was for 150 employees and ambulance was for 500 employees, if you can clearly see that, All right, just a second, yes, here, 500 Im workers, we did that, right. So basically 150 workers, for every 150 workers there will be a first aid box and for, one for 500 workers there will be a facility of ambulance rooms. The D is option, right? You can see here also students, the questions are very, very basic. You need to be just be thorough with the concept that we are studying. When you are concentrating and you are being very much involved with the uh, classes and you are revising your notes, these are very easy questions for you to attempt, right? Anybody who has attended this session with a lot of concentration and with a lot of, uh, you know, focus, he or she can easily answer these questions. Let's move forward. Fourth question, when was the first Factories Act enacted? So basically it was enacted in the year 1885, just let, let me just go back where for the first time it was enacted in the year, again going back to the history, the first time the Factories Act was enacted was in the year 1881, right, 1851 it was already one, running and in 1881 um, the Factories Act was passed for the first time, right. Then you have the first commission of labor, uh, commission on labor was submitted report in the year 18, 1969. It is a part, actually I have not taught this, but it can be a part of your, um, you know, general uh, GK question also related to labor law. First aid box is to be provided to definitely 150 of the uh, persons. Then as per the Factories Act of 1948, canteen should be provided in a factory where more than how many workers? It is basically not more than 250. Let me just go back and let's see that where we was where did we studied about the canteen thing. Yes, 250. Can you see that? So for 250. Who is an adolescent as per the Factories Act of 1948? We have already read that in the, just the previous slides. A person who is basically between 15 to 18 years. Let's go back and see. Yes, an adolescent who has attended, attended attained the age of 17 years but has, sorry, not this one. Yes, this one. Above the age of 15 years and below the year, age of 18 years. So basically this comes under option the option is C, right? The Factories Act of 1948 provides crutches facility and maintain for the use of children under the age of six years, right? 
and how many employees or female working uh, employees must be there if you remember it was uh, about mo more than 30 years let's go back and check that we did it, that it right it is basically comes under the welfare uh, definition so under that yes so it has to be six years and more than 30 women workers right now let me just take you through a few more questions section 49 of the factories act covers basically it covers welfare officer this is basically a factual question so you need to know this okay weekly hours canteens and emergency standards are not under this right now uh, the questions that i have included are if you remember the table that we did in the beginning so adult itself is defined under the section if you can recall it it comes under the section of 2a right according to me it's 2a i hope you have uh, freezed your answer let's go back and check whether it is 2a or not yes it is comes under the section 2a right option a adult is a person who has completed this we have already done in the previous uh, questions 14 right section 2c of the act de defines uh, if you remember th the section 2c and you can recall it it is competent person let's go back and check that if is section 2c defining the the act defines a competent person so as you can see here right now students these charts are very very easy for you so that you remember clearly during your exam so sorry it was not 2c it is 2ca okay so the, for basically for 2C we have the option for child. Okay, a person who is not 15 year old is a definitely a child. Okay, a person has who has turned 17 yesterday, which is a statement is true. The person is a child. The person is a child as well as an adolescent. The person was an adolescent one year back right all of the above so for this particular statement i would say since the person has turned 17 yesterday so he or she is right now an adolescent only right so the person was an adolescent one year back and so basically this person is a, is an adolescent and i would say the c option then section 2 cb of the factories act defined basically child labor labor process or hazardous process it is basically hazardous process okay then moving on question 35 a person okay so last two questions for the discussion today day is a 24 hour period that begins begins as 6 6 a.m. Sorry, second. 6 a.m. No, as per the definition that is there of the definition of a day, it begins at midnight at 12. So 12 a.m. Basically, so basically the uh, the statement is false. Okay. Then comes the according to the factories act of 1948 the week start at the midnight of saturday the power so this is basically a question that is going, you are going to be attempting when you are doing the we are defining the term power and that we are going to do in the next class right so i hope you have understood the session for today and everything that we have done today and all the important definitions that were there if you have any doubts you can share your doubts in the chat box and i'll be answering your doubts for this particular session, I am closing the session right now. 
Thank you. Take care.